Highly recommended. Wow, you've got to try this blueberry rhubarb soda. Welcome back to the fermentation adventure. This week it is blueberry season in Central Florida, so we are making blueberry soda. One step further, we're adding a twist to this blueberry soda because we're adding rhubarb. Blueberry rhubarb soda. If you can tell, we're even dressed for the occasion in blue for blueberry season. So why would you even want to make blueberry soda? Well, for one, you're going to have a really hard time finding it in the store, especially if it's got a twist on it like blueberry rhubarb soda. This doesn't have all of the junk that's in normal sodas. This is all natural, made from blueberries and it's even alive. Like many of the other sodas that we've made, ginger ale, lemongrass ginger ale, the base of these use a starter culture called a ginger bug. And we have ours right here. I just took it out of the refrigerator. This is a ginger bug that we've had in the fridge for probably almost a year now. Every so often, we feed it so that we can make homemade sodas like this. Now what this does is this ginger bug is going to eat all the sugar and it produces that fine fizziness that we always talk about. That's how you make the homemade sodas, with a starter culture like the ginger bud. Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. Okay, let's get started, but don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of these recipes. Today we are making a half a gallon of blueberry soda, so the very first ingredient is blueberries. We have so many wonderful memories of picking wild blueberries everywhere we go hiking. We've picked them in Maine off of Acadia National Park. On the top of a mountain. We've picked them in our own backyard. Yeah, they're plump and really big right now. We need three cups of fresh blueberries or frozen blueberries. Either one will work. So if you have blueberries in the freezer, it's totally fine. You can use the same amount and the recipe will turn out the same. All right, so let's give these a wash. These look so beautiful. And these blueberries are from Wilmington, North Carolina today. And if you've ever been to Wilmington, it is such a cute little town. And I just kind of let them dry a little bit and then I patted them dry. But it's okay if the stems are left on there. I wouldn't worry about removing them. That will take a lot of time. And you're gonna strain this off later anyway. We're just gonna put these in the pot, but we have more stuff to add. So don't start boiling yet. We're making the simple syrup for the soda. That brings us to the next ingredient, which is rhubarb. Rhubarb. This is an interesting little fruit, vegetable. Uh, red celery. <laughs> huge celery. I mean, look how big that is. It's like sour. I used to cut it and just dip it in sugar and eat right off of it. Like sour candy, I guess. It's amazing. For this recipe, we need two cups of chopped rhubarb. Now the reason we want to chop this is because we want to get all of the flavor out as we possibly can. Once we put it into the boiling water, rhubarb really turns to mush. Oh my gosh, I can't help but eat this. Okay, this is what I like to do. Just a little slice and I dip it in a whole lot of sugar. So healthy, right? Whoa! That's delicious. So tart, but so good. That's what I used to do as a kid. Let's fill up this container. Perfect! We're gonna add this rhubarb to our blueberries in the pot. Look at that beautiful color. Now, if you're making just straight blueberry soda, we usually like to use about one cup of sugar per half gallon, but we're gonna do one cup and a fourth. And that's because we're using the rhubarb, which is that sourness that we have to cut into a little bit. So we add that little bit extra of sugar. Now, don't be too shocked about how much sugar we're using. We're using the lacto-fermentation process. This ginger bug is going to eat a lot of that sugar. It's still gonna be pretty sweet in the end, but a lot of the sugar is gonna be eaten up and that's gonna turn into the fun bubbles that we know. We need our next ingredient, non-chlorinated water. We're making a half gallon, but we don't want just a half gallon of water because the blueberries have a lot of liquid in them. So we're gonna start with about one and a half quarts of non-chlorinated water. Make sure you're using non-chlorinated water or distilled water, anything that doesn't have any chlorine because if you put that in with the ginger bug, it will kill it. So we're just gonna put that in there. We'll go ahead and give it a little stir. Get that sugar dissolved. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil and then bring it back down to simmer for 15 minutes. 
And that will be a perfect amount to get our simple syrup. I'm actually gonna use this handy dandy little potato masher to mash in all the flavor that's in the blueberry and inside the rhubarb. It's not a necessary step, but I think it adds a little bit more of the flavor into our liquid. We wanna make sure it's totally cool before we move on to the next step. We could just let that sit on the counter and then eventually after probably a few hours, it'll go to room temperature, but we like to do a trick. Now check this out. First, we fill this with ice. You can see I've used tap water, which is chlorinated, so you have to be careful not to mix this into the pot. Of course, be careful with this, it's hot. We're gonna take our really hot pot and put it right into that ice bath. Give it a stir and that should transfer the heat away from the pot and into the icy cold water and it'll cool down very quickly. Now we're ready to ferment. So we need to get this into the half gallon jar. We have a wide mouth funnel and we also have some sort of strainer. Now this could possibly get messy so you might wanna do this over your sink, but we're gonna just take a chance so you can see what it looks like. But I'm wearing white. The filter is getting kind of clogged. Kind of take the spoon and just push it down in there and stir it. All the juice will go through. Now this, this is good stuff. That's really right? good. This is really good stuff. Essentially, you made a preserve. Not yeah. as sweet and a little bit more liquidy, but it's kind of a preserve. And you only want to mash it down in there if you're okay with having a lot of sediment and a little bit of particles in your soda, which we always like, we're okay with that. If you do not want particles in your soda, don't mash it down. Just take everything that's strained out and throw it out. We're almost there. That is blueberry. I mean, you really can't see through it. Go ahead and pour the rest. That's perfect. So we thought for sure we'd have to add a little bit of liquid, but there was a lot of liquid in those blueberries to begin with. You know what that means? We're using one and a half quarts of liquid. There's at least a half a quart of liquid in the blueberries and the rhubarb. That looks so delicious. So then our next ingredient is ginger bug. And we wanna put a half a cup of ginger bug starter culture into our blueberry rhubarb soda. Now to make this, we have a recipe right up here. So check that out. I'm going to scoop it out. We don't want any of the ginger pieces in there. Mm -hmm. Since I use a fourth cup measuring spoon to fit it in there, I'm gonna do this twice. Now it looks like we filled it a little high, but not by much, so it should be okay. Now we just want to give this a stir. We want to make sure the ginger bug starter is incorporated throughout the entire mixture. So we are ready for the fermentation process. Ah! What we like to use are these fermentation lids. They're just silicone. Place it right on top of the jar. Screw that right down on top of there. As this starts to ferment, all these gases are going to be coming up and trying to push out of the jar and then it just escapes out of that little hole in the top. It keeps all the oxygen out, so you're less likely to get things like calm yeast or any mold. This is gonna be a crazy active ferment. How long should this ferment sit on the counter? This should probably ferment for about two to five days, and it really depends on your house and where you live. If you live in a climate like we do, we have air conditioning, so it's 72, 74 degrees. So for us, it's about three days, but we're gonna follow this throughout the fermentation process and check it out and show you what to expect during fermentation along the way. Well, this was unexpected. It's only been 24 hours and my goodness is it going wild. There are so many bubbles happening that even the pieces of blueberry and sediment are being pulled up to the top and coming out of the top. Well, I guess we'll still let it ferment another day, but we're gonna have to keep an eye on this one because it is super active. And after all, it started bubbling up again. So we're gonna take out one cup of liquid. And that way we have enough headroom in our big half gallon mason jar. So if it starts bubbling up a little bit more, we should have enough space for it to go. All right, it's been 48 hours and I can see that our blueberry rhubarb soda has finally slowed down a little bit. The bubbles aren't as intense as they were. It was incredible before. So what we're going to do is combine these again because we just needed to remove it to give it enough headspace. So now we can refill it back to that two quart line. Should be good to go now and we will check on it tomorrow. Hey, our blueberry rhubarb soda has been fermenting for three days. So check out this side by side. You can't really tell a difference on the colors. All around the top, it's crazy. There's bubbles all the way around and they are still going. So let's take a look inside and see what it looks like. See if we think it's ready after three days in our environment. All right, here we go. 
it is still quite active even after three days of fermentation. It doesn't have any common yeast. It smells like we would expect. We're ready to bottle. Now we want to get this transferred into glass bottles that can hold pressure because we want to carbonate it. We want to get that soda experience when you pop the top and get the tss. Yes. Oh yeah. And also it allows it to ferment a little bit longer. It's going to ferment slowly, but a little bit in these glass bottles. It doesn't matter if they're tan like that, that really just keeps light from coming in. But the important thing is that it can hold pressure. We'll put a link in the show notes below. In this recipe, it's going to give us four bottles of soda, but one of them is going to be our tester bottle. So the tester bottle is really important. You don't know how much pressure you have in here, which is why we have the tester bottle. We can squeeze this and have a good idea of what's going on inside this bottle. If you use a number one recyclable bottle made for soda so it can handle acidic environments which is really nice that's what you want you don't want any kind of plastic that's going to break down and maybe be bad for your health but we do want to give it a quick stir before we bottle we're going to put it in this measuring cup you have a nice fine little point to get it in there we're going to cap these off we don't want any air escaping from here these are just the easy flip tops so we're just going to close these as well now we have our half gallon of blueberry rhubarb soda on the way. We're ready for a secondary fermentation. Woohoo! We're most likely going to go only 24 hours, but we're going to check on it every single day and let you know what to expect so that you know how long to ferment it at home. We're going to use our little tester bottle. Fairly solid. Still a little give. These bottles have been carbonating for 48 hours and now we are ready to test the pressure in the tester bottle before we open these. That is rock solid with the tiniest bit of give. Which means it's perfect. I think if we had gone any longer, it probably would have been a little bit too much and I'd be really worried about these glass bottles. You ready? Here we go. Ooh, did you hear that? That was really active but no bubbles. Yeah, no bubbles. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe, oh, there's a few Wait, there. Are they're they gathering right now? Yeah, they're on their way. <laughs> huh, very huh. interesting. We're definitely ready to open one of our glass bottles and we want to give this a taste test. I can't wait to see what this tastes like. I'm so excited. I'm really excited. We're going to serve one of them over ice. Beautiful. Wow, look at the foam on that. You got some amazing foam because of the ice in that glass. Ah, wow. That smells like fresh blueberry with a hint of fermentation. Wow. That is really good. That's a treat. I can definitely taste the sweetness. It's still pretty sweet. I really can't taste the rhubarb anymore, but I have a feeling it cut the sweetness a little bit. It's kind of tart. So now that this is done, we can move these bottles to the refrigerator, but you have to be careful. They'll keep on carbonating, so watch out. Especially on something like this where it was so active originally, you may start seeing more carbonation. So burp them occasionally, just open it a little bit, close it, or you know, drink it up. For more delicious and healthy recipes like these, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We appreciate every one of you. Now get out there and create some culture. Cheers. Cheers. This won't last long. Oh my gosh, this looks like sangria and it tastes like it too.